Hi everyone, I'm State Representative Derek Slapp and I want to welcome you to uh, another edition of uh, Derek and uh, the District. Uh, we have a, a great show for you um, and we're going to kick it off with uh, our headliner. Uh, Barbara Lerner is the Executive Director of the West Hartford uh, Chamber of Commerce. Welcome and, and thank you for joining us. Hi, and Derek. It's great to see you. Good to see you uh, as well. And uh, just before we get to you, um, you know, the, the music that we just heard and the, the opening, if I can just brag on my family just for a moment, <laughs> uh, my wife and uh, daughters played that and my wife wrote it and composed it. So when you're listening to it and you're watching it later, you can know that that's an original that's piece. Great. So. so this is really a Derek family show. <laughs> that's right. We have a lot of music in the family. Um, but one of the reasons that I asked you to, uh, to join me is because, um, you know, obviously the economy, uh, from a state perspective, is so important. I mean, we just got back uh, all the private sector jobs that we lost from the recession, mm -hmm. the Great Recession. That's a long time that it took to get this far. Um, and then certainly we're very concerned about what's going on in West Hartford, too. So I wanted to ask you just to kind of kick things off of um, what, what's your assessment of how um, the local uh, economy in West Hartford uh, is doing in the business community here? Well, it's interesting. When you, when you look at West Hartford, we, um, especially the chamber, we tend to meet the new businesses that are coming into town because we always want to welcome them and embrace them in our community. And I always have a big list of new businesses that have come to town, and it's all over town. It, people think of West Hartford as West Hartford Center, right. but we're very West Hartford Center-centric. Mm -hmm. But we actually have five business districts, and each one of those districts is successful. Um, they've gone through periods where they've had more businesses opening than at other times. And right now, the Home Design District, New Park Avenue, right. is one of the hottest districts in town. And they have so many new businesses opening there. So I pretty much could walk up and down that street and talk to um, supermarkets, yep. bakeries, restaurants. We have this great residential building coming in. Hopefully, we're going to have um, a food truck park there. So right. lots of good things are happening all over town business-wise and I think residential-wise too. I've heard, and this is uh, kind of anecdotally, but maybe you could confirm this, that um, you know, oftentimes, it, to your point, the center is what most people think of and um, as it becomes uh, more successful, sometimes the rents go up and then uh, and, and that uh, causes some businesses who maybe were in the center to go to other parts of West Hartford. Is that is that occurred? And maybe not necessarily a bad thing in some cases, right? Well, well it has occurred. I mean, not, not to a, a great extent, mm -hmm. but there are some businesses um, who move for a number of reasons. And one of them may be that rent has gotten raised. You know, there was a tax increase. The landlords have to pass that increase on to their tenants. And for some tenants, it does become a burden. But they don't have to leave town. So if they leave West Hartford Center, they can go to Park Road, New Park, New Britain Avenue. I mean, if you drive up and down those streets, there are not a lot of empty storefronts. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, the center is uh, changing too, isn't it? I it mean, sure it, I is. I remember uh, during the campaign when I was knocking on a, um, a, a lot of doors, and, and sometimes people would lament and say that it's all banks and restaurants now, and it's not as much retail. And I think maybe that's more of a function of just the national economy, where because of Amazon, right, it's it's more difficult, right, to keep retail uh, open. It is, yeah. and I do speak to uh, the property owners, and they have that difficulty. They're always out there looking for something new and different and not restaurant. And some property owners don't want to rent to restaurants. They think that we may reach a tipping point where we have too many restaurants in a specific area. Um, it, it doesn't seem to stop restaurants <laughs> right. from opening in right. the center. We have two new ones opening soon. We've got Division West opening on LaSalle Road and Harvest, which will be opening later on in the year. Right. Um, the American Legion is now turning into a just a restaurant okay. as opposed to the American Legion Hall. Um, and I, I, I think people are asking for this. It, right. I mean, if you walk around at night, the restaurants are full. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have not reached that tipping point yet. We do want to see diversification, though. We, mm -hmm. we don't want to be all restaurants. So um, if you look at different areas, there are different types of businesses opening. There um, a vape shop just opened on New Britain Avenue. Maybe okay. not my favorite type of business, but apparently they do business. Right, right. Golf Tech opened on New Britain Avenue. I mean, that's a unique business yeah. to town. Um, I did hear there are two more uh, restaurants opening on New Britain Avenue, but I, I don't think they've reached that level yet gotcha. where they can't support anymore. 
Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. And, and we love, uh, you know, my family, we live uh, just about a mile from the center, so we can walk to uh, ice cream, and the kids love that, of course. Yeah. So Icy we, rolls. It, we just zero, went there, actually. Zero degree. It, was great. it yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. um, so one of, um, certainly, uh, my responsibilities, right, as a lawmaker is to make sure that I'm listening to folks, and that, of course, includes the business community. So and I know you have your, really your finger on the pulse of, of the business community in town. So what can you tell me and then everybody who's, who's watching about um, their challenges and what are they concerned about right now? Well, I, first of all, I want to thank you. You have been incredibly um, open and available to the chamber, and we've had a great dialogue of since course, you've been elected. Yeah, um, we have an economic development committee, and we was had a meeting this morning, and we were talking about, you know, what are some of the things they would like me to bring up with you and mm -hmm. discuss. And one of the things is why we don't have a budget yet. Right. And, we, and I'm, we're not blaming you for no, not no, having no, a look, budget. You know, times we are tough. Yeah. We understand it's quite a process, but I mean, we're the second wealthiest state in the United States. And That's right. We are the, I think there are only two other states that do not have budgets also at this point. And why are we in this position? I mean, that's one of the concerns of our business community. Yep. Um, they want to make sure that we still remain um, a viable state to come and do business in and that we make it business friendly. Right. No, no, that makes sense. And I do get that question a lot. I should say that we're taping this and, uh, you know, by the time it airs, we may in fact have a budget, but, yeah. but it, it ho we hope so. Um, one of the reasons, I mean, I think you mentioned a great, a great point about that we are still a very wealthy state. Uh, we had for 70 years, um, incredibly, um, Republicans and Democrats alike, um, you know, really failing to make responsible decisions in terms of paying uh, for debts that they were incurring at the time, right, when it comes to uh, pension costs and health care retiree costs. So they were promising these benefits to uh, uh, state employees uh, and then putting away, in many cases, nothing for them, right? And they did this for 60 or 70 years. And now, um, the bills are due, essentially. So um, sometimes we refer to this as like the sins of the past. So 30% of state revenues now are going to pay those off. Um, and we won't really be fully out from under this rock until 2032. Um, so we have to grow the economy in part, right? I think to, um, so we're not, you know, just doing uh, the same old thing and it's like Groundhog Day every, every two years. Um, but that 30% of revenue, it's crowding out spending then uh, on really important things. Um, you know, uh, helping the business community, public education, all that. So, um, anyways, we're you know we're fighting to uh, do the best, obviously, for the town. But um, I, I get it. Yeah, I mean that, that that uncertainty is not good for business, right? And I think business would feel better if they saw that there was a twenty-year plan. Yep. Um, and we haven't seen anything like this. I mean, right. we seem to be working in either um, you know ad hoc, you know, um, it, it, bad experience to bad experience as yeah. opposed to making a plan that we know that we will be out of this in 20 years. I, it, I hadn't heard 2032, that's like a long ways it's off. It's 15 years away. <laughs> it's a long ways off. Yeah, so the debt goes like this up, you know, if it's this pie chart, or not a pie chart rather, but a, gr a graph, uh, and then right at 22, 2032 it finally Drop. So it there does. are some things that I think state government okay. should do before that in terms of there should be restructuring, there should be you know structural reform um, and reducing uh, those costs as much as possible. And then I think, and this is where you, you know, and all the businesses come in, is we have to get growth, right? Yes, we do. Um, so what are some other things that businesses highlighted in terms of what would be important uh, for growth? Um, well, th they would also like to see the state run like a business yep. as opposed to... Um, and I'm not quite sure how it's run right now. <laughs> um, where, you, where you have a budget that you stick to and you don't cons consistently run with a deficit because any business would be out of business in, in a very short amount of time. And I'm sitting around a table with you know business owners and some of them own four or five locations for their business and they're frustrated mm -hmm. at the way the state is run. Right. Right. No, that's a that's a good point. I mean, I think there's many times um, where, uh, you know, there there do need to be efficiencies and, um, you know, there's lean processing and in manufacturing all these lessons that we can take right to make business uh, or to make government, uh, 
you know, similar in many ways. There are some things where I think government will never get there because government has to do something sometimes that uh, businesses don't want to do. In other words, it's a social service agency and provider. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I agree. I mean, there's many lessons uh, we should take. Anything else uh, that they mentioned that well, I'm going to pass on to everybody? They had, they had a lot of positive things to okay. say, Good. too. So the positive is that our environment is such in West Hartford that new businesses are still coming to town. Um, they're not stepping back and saying, you know, well, the state's in really bad shape. I don't want to move my business here. Right. Um, there's a business from um, South Carolina that is moving to West Hartford. Wonderful. And they are moving here, which is unusual. Do you often hear that? You hear northern businesses moving south. Sure. This is a southern business moving north because Great. their base, their customer base is mostly in New England. Okay. And they're trying to cut their shipping costs. So they're, they are moving to Reed Street. Okay. In West Hartford, which was really exciting, they yeah. do um, auto shelters, and it has a it has a name, and I can't even remember. That's, what and it and is. how many jobs? I'm is not sure. I'm not sure, uh, I'm but but I think here, they're but... bringing um, eight employees up here. Wonderful. So, well, that's so great. We, we were very excited about that. We have lots of new residential in town. Okay. New residential is good for everybody. It's yeah. good for retailers. It's good for the restaurants. It's good for for um, our tax base. People when they move here, they tend to do everything in town mm -hmm. as opposed to spending their dollars elsewhere. I mean, it's good for the Noah Webster house. I mean, it's good for everybody. Right. Um, Steel Road, they, they uh, rented every one of those units before they even opened. Wow. And I wasn't that aware is, of that until today. That is fantastic. Yes. And so we're looking for more residential um, in the area. We get, we want millennials, we want young people to come and stay here. Right. And I think new housing appeals to them. Okay. Yep. Um, we have young professionals. The chamber just started a young professionals group called Flow. Um, it started in December. We were asked by some of our members to have a younger members group where they could do uh, separate events and forty events. the cutoff. Forty is the cutoff. I missed it. Okay, yes, sorry, Derek. Years, no. You know, you know, they're flexible. All right, all right, that's good. <laughs> um, it has over three hundred people on their mailing list. They have one hundred and thirty members already. Great. Um, so again, so those are young business professionals, and most of them do work in this area, yep. if not in West Hartford, they're in Hartford. We kind of consider Hartford part of our demographic anyway. Sure. Um, I just want to say something. I know uh, you worked, worked on a project that um, had a lot of people unhappy in the beginning on the MDC, and um, the mayor was explaining to me this morning, because I know I had complained to you about my MDC bill yeah, at yeah. one point, and you explained to me you know, why we went to a monthly bill and the Clean Water Act and all of that. But um, Shari had said that uh, you worked on a legislation so that um, the MDC, and I forget the term, ad valorem, how they were doing things, and so that it did change for West Hartford's benefit, we would sure. not... Uh, yeah, no, I can address... Yeah, I've heard a lot of frustration <laughs> from uh, constituents and people in West Hartford about the MDC. Uh, one, yes, their bill, that's certainly part of it. And then two, um, just how it's run overall, and that it needs to be more transparent and more accountable. So uh, really the first bill that I introduced at the General Assembly, and it passed both chambers and was signed by the governor, um, is going to add some oversight to the MDC. So we're going to create an independent consumer uh, advocate, um, not not reporting to the MDC, but reporting to you and me, which is I think, how it should be. Um, and then the other thing is that if a member town uh, cannot pay its bill, and this is what came up last year. This when, is a big one for This us. is a big <laughs> one. And Hartford was in jeopardy of not being able to pay its bill. So all the towns had to set aside what we call these reserve payments. So uh, it was about $2 million that West Hartford had to take out of its budget. So that affects right our schools and property taxes, et cetera. Um, in order to hold in case another town, in this case Hartford, was delinquent. So then we would have to pitch in and pay Hartford's share. Uh, this bill uh, takes that off the table and says we don't get left um, holding uh, the bill if another town uh, can't pay. And so in other words, state grants then are redirected to the delinquent town. So this will, you know, this uh, ensures that we don't have to take millions out of our own budget to help pay for another town. And that all affects property tax. Absolutely, yeah. So that makes it easier for businesses to come here because yep. the landlords will not be getting, hopefully, another property tax increase anytime soon. That's right. That's and right. they can keep their rent stable. And it's not just for retailers. It's for, you know, office tenants. It's for, for anybody in town. So yeah. I thought that was that was really a big deal. And yeah. our members are aware of that. So, so 
Thanks for doing good. that one. Absolutely. So we're making progress. Yes, well, we are. Yeah, good. Well, I <laughs> yeah. want to thank you again for uh, for coming in and spending a few minutes and talking about uh, the economy. And uh, let's let's do it again in a few months, and hopefully we'll continue to make good progress. Terrific. Thanks so much for having me, Derek. Thanks, Barbara. We'll take a, a quick break, and we'll be right back with a uh, slap salutes segment. Thanks. All right, welcome back. And this segment is called Slap Salutes. And what I'm trying to do here is to really highlight uh, people and sometimes businesses um, that are really going above and beyond and, and really adding a lot of value to West Hartford and making this uh, the town that we all love uh, to live and work in. So two very special uh, guests to introduce to you. Uh, Ellen Sayers is an advisory committee uh, board member for Gifts of Music. And we'll explain what that is in just a moment. And then Casey Doe. Um, Casey, welcome. Nice to meet you. Uh, you are a senior at uh, Connors High School, right? Yes. All right. So, Casey, we'll get to you in just a moment, but I want to start with Alan. And uh, one, thank you for coming in and thank spending you. your time. Thank you. Happy uh, to be here. Awesome. Well, tell us what Gifts of Music is all about. Well, Gifts of Music is a public-private private collaboration between um, uh, the West Hartford School System, uh, Hart School of Music Community Division, and parents in West Hartford. So what we do is... Uh, we rate, the parents raise money, our money is held at the Hartford Foundation and they invest it, and then that money goes to pay teachers at Hart School of Music to come into the schools in West Hartford to teach deserving students who have an interest and a desire and an ability for music, but would not, maybe not be able to afford their own lessons. So we bring teachers into the school system uh, to teach these students. We also have an instrument recycling program where we, uh, we gather up instruments that are in people's closets uh, that they don't play anymore and we refurbish them and we get them into the hands of students and we have an ask after school uh, practice session for students in several of the schools and we also run a summer um, Suzuki, Sizzlin Suzuki summer wow. camp. Wow. So we're expanding. We have about 30 students in our Gifts of Music program now. Great. In uh, several elementary schools, the middle schools, and the high schools. All right. And Casey is one of our students in seventh grade. She's been a, she plays the violin, and she's been a student since seventh grade. Wonderful. And uh, later on, in a few minutes, we'll put up some information yeah. if people mm -hmm. do want to contribute or get involved. Mm -hmm. But um, Casey, why don't we uh, why don't we go to you and, and <laughs> ask you um, what you know, how have you been impacted by gifts of music? Well, I do a lot with my violin, and it's definitely helped me a lot. And especially. Since I started taking lessons in seventh grade, it has actually made me a better player, and it really helps. Yeah, so Gifts of Music has helped uh, financially make uh, lessons available to you? Yeah. Right? So where would you be without Gifts of Music? I would probably not be practicing my violin so much, but with the lessons, I feel like I'm more involved with my own instrument, and it actually makes me love playing my instrument so much. Yeah, and, and what kind of, um, you know, what role does music play in your life? I know, uh, you know, I have uh, three kids, and they all uh, play uh, different instruments, and it's really important to them, and, and to also, I, I, I'll speak just for them, to feel like there's something that they really excel at, and that's good for their self-esteem and good for self-discipline and all, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. What, you know, what's the impact been for you? Well, when I was younger, I didn't think I was re any good at the music I was playing. And then as soon as I started taking lessons, I started learning all these techniques and new ways, like the correct ways to play it. And it's definitely made me better at multitasking, being aware of everything, and overall just, high, just a little better at being able to do many things at once. Yeah, that makes sense. Alan, I know that you're one of the, um, you know, the original kind of organizers of this. Mm -hmm. um, so w what was your inspiration for, for well, getting this off the ground? Also, my family is very involved in music and all three of my sons were in the Hall High Jazz Band and we saw what it brought to them. And uh, my husband and I have always been in, involved in music our whole lives. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of what we did for fun. So um, when our children graduated, uh, we, got, we were involved with some of the other parents that we, we did so many things. We, we were so involved in the music program that we, we didn't want to lose it. We, didn't, we, we wanted to stay involved somehow. Right. And so this was a way to stay involved and to give the opportunity that our kids had. Because West Hartford is a very, in, very amazing town because it always has had music has always been very important to the town of West Hartford. And they've right. always held it. Uh, it's, it's the budgets, usually they keep the budget for music, which is rare uh, in a lot of towns now. So right. West Hartford has always held music as something very important, and we want to see it continue. 
Yeah, and no, well said. That's one of the reasons I love this town yeah. is we have these great public schools, and as a community, we mm -hmm. support music and the arts, and really believe right in the importance of educating the entire the entire when, student. When my I have two sons who went to a music conservatory for college, and they went, and they were their friends were amazed at how how good their music was coming from a public school. And we said, well, that's West Hartford. West Hartford is better than most other towns in the country. Right. And so we want to keep that going. And we're so happy that Casey's already said she wants to minor in music. When she, if she goes, hopefully she'll be at UConn, and she's going to minor in music, which will keep. We were having a conversation saying, yeah. you know, music is something that you can keep going your entire life. Absolutely. So, Casey, if there are people who are they're watching this and they're thinking, oh, maybe I'll get involved, maybe I'll contribute, what would you say to them? What would your message be to them if they're on the fence about uh, helping out uh, give some music? Oh, my goodness. Like, they should really go for it because, like, I thought it was really enjoyable, especially going throughout the year, learning new techniques and learning how to play a piece. And I remember when I start learning a new piece, I'm always really nervous and I'm like I can't play this and I look to my I look to my lesson teacher and I'm like Sam I can't do this there's no way I can do this and then and progressively I'll get better and I'll start hearing it and then when we finally have a recital towards June yep. I'm playing it like I know it so much wow. <laughs> mention your teacher tell us who your teacher is tell us about your teacher well my teacher is Sam Hiller Sam Drake and she may or may not be sitting right there because I asked her to. <laughs> Good. Um, and she's with the community division, right? The yeah. The school of music. Yeah. yeah. We should um, plug them because they're a really great asset. Yeah, I actually did not start off with Sam at first, but um, I, I'm really not used to change, but I made it work. She yeah. is a great teacher. And what makes her such a, a great teacher? She's really understanding and she doesn't She'll know when something's too difficult, and she'll be like encouraging most of the time, all the time, actually. How does she, how does your lesson fit into your school day? <laughs> oh, sorry. I know you're very busy. <laughs> so usually it's once a week during probably my orchestra period because okay. I don't really have any free periods. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll fit during my orchestra period. So it's a 30-minute lesson during my orchestra class. All right. And what are you working on now? What piece are you uh, are you trying to perfect? I actually haven't started my lessons yet this year, Okay. but I'm hoping for something very challenging. And well, what's been one of your favorite pieces? What have you done? You know, what was the piece you said, "Wow, I really nailed this." Or do you have a favorite composer? I know we're putting you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I really like Vivaldi. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good choice. Excellent. Um, <laughs> well, in. Four Seasons, or is that just kind of cliche? Is it other than all these? <laughs> that is so cliche. So, oh my gosh, yeah, right. <laughs> Guilty. Nothing like being put down by a, a senior you in high school. That's, yeah, you know what? That it. says a lot. See, that right. is perfect. There are so many other pieces. I know, that's true. I should know that too, <laughs> having classical music in the house all the time. Um, Ellen, why don't you, uh, if you would, uh, tell people how they can get involved, and then we have a big event coming up in October. Yes, um, we have um, we, we have a fundraising, we send letters out in May, and uh, fundraising letters, because we exist because of the donations from people that think music is important. And then uh, once a year we have a, a benefit concert where we, and it's the best concert ever, because we have a, a combined Hall Connor Jazz Band All-Stars, and then we have Giovanni Celisti, and then we have some of our Gifts of Music students, and then uh, after intermission we bring back an alumni from West Hartford, and there's been some amazing mm -hmm. musicians that have graduated from West Hartford. So this year uh, the concert is on October 21st okay. at the IAE uh, Int e oh, Intensive Education Academy okay, yep. on uh, Mohawk Drive and North Main Street. Um, uh, people can, can Google Gifts of Music West Hartford and it will lead you to our website and you'll be able to buy tickets there. Tickets are $25. And, um, and this year we have Alexa Tarantino who graduated from Hall High School. Uh, as she's a saxophone player and she now plays with the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra. The wow. first woman ever to play with the Lincoln Center Jazz Fantastic. Orchestra. Fantastic. And she's bringing a friend who is a tap dancer, a professional hey, tap dancer. That is cool. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. It's gonna be absolutely wonderful. So um, our concert is October 21st. Okay. And you can give that way. Or if you just, um, you can, Send a donation to the arts office at the West Hartford 
um, um, the town hall, the arts department at the West Harbor Town Hall. Okay. Uh, that's kind of who manages our manages our money. So if you, if you want to send a donation in, just send it to Gifts of Music, care of the arts office at the town hall. Great, and we're going to put that information up on the screen too. So if you want to contribute, and you know, uh, as Casey said, I mean, it is life changing. It's such an important thing to do. Um, so when if you're deciding, well, maybe I should donate, maybe I shouldn't. I mean, think of Casey and uh, think of, of all the um, the students in uh, West Hartford who you will be having a direct impact on. You'll be giving them, as a, it's called, right, the gift of music. So my email is Derek, D-E-R-E-K, dot slap, S-L-A-P, at C-G-A dot C-T dot gov, and we'll have it up on the screen uh, as well. And I want to thank you for watching uh, another uh, edition of Derek in the District. It's an honor to serve you, um, and I look forward to continuing um, to do that, and uh, we'll uh, have a, a new edition uh, next month. Uh, until then, uh, have a, a wonderful uh, month, and we'll see you soon. Take care.